This is a second demo video of a truth functional expansion where we are going to focus on how to use our expansion to construct a finite extensional model to show that the following argument is invalid. So please pause the video, work on your truth functional expansion, and compare your solution to the one that I'm just about to paste in now. Here's the solution. I just want to point out something on the premise one. So you can see why I have two lines of entry for premise one. The first line is because I expanded the existential, and then after that I expanded the universal. If on a test you just went straight to the final answer, that's fine. You don't need to do this intermediate line if, you, if you're if you just good at this and, and you don't want to bother. All that you really need to provide is the singular statement. Now on premise two, I went straight to the singular statement, but that's actually because the main connective was the conditional here. So I just expanded the antecedent, boom, conditional, and then expanded the consequent. And so it looks like I did it all at once, but I actually didn't. I did them separately. And then the premise three, there's just a single uh, quantifier. So that's how come I got that. Notice that I have the brackets around here to preserve the or as the main connective. If you don't have the brackets around each part, you actually have a not well formed sentence. And finally, in the conclusion, I expanded and I was careful to expand the universal only around the L predicate. Okay, so again, I hope this stuff uh, is clear. And here's our table, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did in the previous question. Universe of discourse is 0, 1. I need to figure out what's in the G predicate, the H predicate, and the L2 predicate. Okay. You sort of just want to proceed in the sort of easiest and most obvious sort of way. So conditionals are tricky. The reason why we know this from truth tables already, a conditional can be true in, in too many sort of ways. The conclusion is actually not so bad because I actually want the conclusion to be false. And a, a false conclusion means both sides need to be false. So that means that and that also need to be false, which means I immediately know something, right? I know that H0 is true, H1 is true. Uh, so I go true, true. And I know that some of these are, uh, sorry, the consequence of these things are false, but I don't know which one. So that was actually a really good starting point. I hope that sort of makes sense why I started there. My next reasonable options are premise 1 and premise 3. It turns out premise 3 is a simpler one. I just need one of these things to be true. So this is sort of nice because I have H0 and H1 are already both true. So at this point, I'm making an arbitrary choice between L00 and L11. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's just pick L11, okay? So that will make this true. This is already true. That's true. And now that's true. So L11 is true. By the way, can L00 also be true? Yes, because OR is inclusive, but I don't have any reason to set it true now, so I'm just leaving it blank. Now, looking back down to where I have information about L11, if I know L11 is true over here, and I know that this conjunction needs to be false, L01 clearly needs to be false. And so L01 is false. That actually takes care of this this side here, so I just need to make some sort of decision here to finish, fix the consequent, or the, con the conclusion. So premise three is good, we're almost done the conclusion. Okay, so we have lots of information, we're ready to keep going. Let's look at premise two, or premise one, it doesn't really matter, at this point we have lots of info. Premise two has an L11, that's true, which makes this disjunction true. And notice that I want the premise to be true, so that the conditional must be true, and we know from truth tables, if the antecedent is true and a conditional is true, then the consequent also must be true. Let's see what we got. Well, I actually have these are both true already, so I'm good. It doesn't even matter what G is. I'm good. So premise two didn't actually add anything interesting. It just sort of said, uh, well, I guess if you don't understand how these things work, then it could screw up your answer. But this doesn't really tell me anything interesting at all. So finally, I'm down to my premise one, and I still need to fix uh, my conclusion. So premise one is a disjunction, and I just have to set one of these things to be true. So which one have, have the most information about? Well, I sort of can see over here that zero one is somehow false, and L11 is already true. Uh, so I might as well just make this one the true thing, uh, and I'll focus here. 
Now, if I made the wrong choice, it's not a big deal. I can just go back and choose the other one. So what's an easy way to make this true? Well, I could make L10 true, but another really easy way I can make this true is to make G1 true. So I'll just make G1 true and see if that screws anything up. G1 true makes this disjunction true, this disjunction true, which makes this conjunct, conjunct true, which of course makes premise one true, good. So here I made G1 true, that's okay. No G's here, no G's here, oh, I'm good. So now just to finish, I have to somehow make L00 and L10 false. Well, that's easy, I can just make them both false. Uh, and that doesn't screw anything else up in my expansion. In fact, if you really real, if you were paying attention closely, you'd realize that I actually didn't need to make both false. I just need to make one false. Okay, so this was a big back and forth. Uh, I went through it pretty quickly, but it's just because uh, you should be perfectly happy with this from truth tables anyway. Now, to finish, we just map this out into our uh, actual description of the model. So one is in G according to this and uh, 0 and 1 are in H, and what's in L? L just has 1, 1 in it. Okay, so this thing here is the answer to the, the, the second question, which is generate a model. So on a test, part one would be, I would ask you to truth functionally expand all this to uh, a universe of two, and then part two would be come up with this model that generates the invalidity. And so the way we do it is we do this truth functional uh, analysis like a shortened truth table.